Well, Asian equities are going to be in a, a sort of a different situation in 2014. We think that domestic growth in a lot of the Asian economies is, is sort of peaking out and plateauing, not really rolling over, but no longer accelerating, um, which means that it's really the external economy, Asian exports, that are going to be the driver at the margin. And the good news is that the developed markets, U.S., Europe, and Japan, all are going to show a pickup in growth. So we think this is going to be a year in which Asia's export economy really starts to pull it along a little bit more strongly. And therefore, as we look around the Asian equity space, it's the export intensive markets, the Koreas, the Taiwans, that we think will probably do better. I think rather than, you know, sort of treating all emerging markets as one unitary asset class, we have to start differentiating within the emerging markets. So while EMs overall probably will underperform, within the EMs we could have some very strong performers and some continued relatively weak performers as well. So we are underweight the EM asset class in Latin America and neutral in emerging Europe. But here in Asia, we're actually somewhat overweight, albeit with a very strong preference for the EMs that have more of an export component rather than the sort of heavily domestic emerging market stories. Well, it will be earnings, absolutely. The um, sort of flip side of the progress that the global economy has made over the past several years is that there's just not enough upside for equities any longer from what we call risk compression. Risk compression basically means the big scary risks like a breakup of the euro area or a hard landing in China have been getting smaller. And as they get smaller, uh, equity earnings multiples have been able to expand even without the earnings growth. Now we really do have to look to the earnings growth to be the driver. And we're not going to find earnings growth equally around all the markets in the region. Uh, exports can and, and almost certainly will be a critical driver of earnings as we look out over the year ahead because it is in the external economies where we see more of the upside. And so we want to look for corporate earnings, particularly in places where you get a combination of sales growth driven by exports and potentially at least some bottom line profitability enhancement uh, from lower input costs. And that means sectors or companies where you have, let's say, a fairly large exposure to either commodity prices or energy prices, where we think that there's still some downside risk looking out over the next year. Well, India's lagging growth is really a function of some very deeply entrenched structural problems with the economy. Most importantly is the almost complete absence of investment now in India, partly because of the sort of echo effect of the anti-corruption investigations of several years ago, and partly because of the persistence of very high interest rates in light of India's structural inflation problem. So growth is probably likely to stay low, although in India, we think GDP at this point is probably at least bumping along the bottom. More interestingly, from a policy perspective, is going to be whether or how the new RBI governor, Raghuram Rajan, uh, is able to deal with this structurally entrenched inflation. And then looking beyond the national elections in May, whether or not a new government or, for that matter, any uh, persistence of the existing ruling coalition may begin to try to attack uh, India's structural growth problems from a reform perspective.